Hi, my name is Jeff Cotter, and today I'd like to showcase how I've used Qt and the Qt tools in a project that I've called the Virtual Automotive Feature Simulator. So I've been working at Ford for the past four years as a feature engineer on a feature called Pro Trailer Backup Assist. So Pro Trailer Backup Assist is a driver assist feature that takes the stress and difficulty out of backing up a trailer and makes it as easy as turning a knob. So I focus on model-based design, which means making computer models of engineering requirements so you can test and validate a feature. So what does it take to design a feature? Well, the goal is to capture a desired user experience and engineering requirements. And traditionally, this is done in more of a text form or flow charts. And then those requirements are then turned into hardware and software and implemented in a prototype vehicle. So there's generally a long lead time for developing so software and hardware. And if there are any mistakes in your requirements, it can be really costly to fix later. So an example of this might be for Pro Trailer Backup Assist. The vehicle may be in a state expecting the user to shift to reverse, but there's a conflict in requirements, and the HMI requirement is showcasing drive forward. So this conflict would create a poor user experience and would need to be corrected. Well, once software and hardware is created, it can be really costly to fix these things. So it's really important to get the requirements right the first time. There's also a push in the automotive industry towards reducing expensive prototype vehicles and doing more virtual validation. And this bit has been accelerated by the current global pandemic. So how do we get around this? Well, at Ford, we've been focusing on model-based design. So what we do is we take those traditionally static text and flow charts and we implement them as computer models in a program like MATLAB and Simulink. So you can create executable models of your requirements so you can test and validate your feature. We also would create limited uh, HMI models so that you could see how the feature was working, but really that support in MATLAB and Simulink was limited. So I turned to Qt in order to increase the capability of our HMI simulations. So what I really liked about Qt was I was able to quickly mock up high quality HMI in QML, and then I was also able to integrate Qt CAN bus so that um, the HMI simulation was able to run on production CAN interfaces. Another benefit was that HMI teams at Ford were also utilizing Qt to create their HMI simulations. So I wanted to be able to efficiently leverage their work and pull it into my feature simulations. So while Qt helped us improve the quality of our HMI simulations, it still didn't create a really immersive experience. So some of the things that were lacking was you weren't able to do a live rear camera display, and that's pretty important for a feature like Pro Trailer Backup Assist so you can see your trailer as you're backing up. You also didn't get a sense of how the HMI was laid out in the vehicle since all of the simulators were uh, individual screens. You also weren't able to experience a feature in a realistic setting. So what I wanted to do as a feature engineer was be able to sit inside the vehicle and actually experience the feature. And the reason I wanted to do this was so that I could create better design decisions up front as I was writing my requirements. So as a feature engineer, I could sit there and ask questions like, well, does this text look better here? What about over here? What happens if the user presses this button? How does the feature react? So I really wanted to create a virtual feature simulation. And to do this, I turned to combining Unreal, Qt, and MATLAB and Simulink. So why these three tools? Well, Unreal brought 3D visualization and a physics engine uh, to the package. Then uh, Qt integrated high quality HMI, and I was able to use existing HMI simulations that we had already created. Then MATLAB and Simulink house all of our feature code and production control models. So the key challenge was uh, integrating all of these three together so that they could communicate and work together. So this is the architecture that I developed, but other communication methods are possible. So between Unreal and MATLAB and Simulink, I use UDP communication. So for example, in Unreal, uh, you have vehicle speed, and that gets sent back to your MATLAB controls model so you can update your vehicle state. And then you send information back to Unreal so you can update your visualization. Then the communication between Qt and MATLAB and Simulink was through CAN. So using Qt CAN bus, I was able to integrate into the production communication interfaces, and you can run this on a computer using virtual CAN. And then the key piece was bringing Qt into Unreal, and I did this using WebGL streaming. So this was inspired by a Qt tech demo where I saw a demonstration that Qt could be brought into Autodesk Vred using the same WebGL streaming. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. 
So the first piece in designing the simulation was developing the world in Unreal. So Unreal is a 3D game engine, and I was able to create a simulation of a vehicle and trailer that you could drive around in the world. So the vehicle was implemented as an Unreal vehicle class, and I connected the trailer to the vehicle using a physics joint so it actually moved and behaved like a real trailer. Then the next piece was creating the world that you could drive that vehicle and trailer in. So for a feature like Pro Trailer Back of Assist, you can test different use cases, like, for example, you can test at the test track, you can be at a boat launch, or maybe test different parking lot maneuvers in a parking lot. Then the key piece was integrating and designing the interior components. So all of the touch interfaces that the user can interact with, for example, the start stop button or the gear shift lever, and also the mirrors and the camera screens. Then Unreal also enabled me to integrate virtual reality and using a VR headset and motion controllers, it really helped amplify the experience. So the next piece was integrating Unreal and MATLAB and Simulink. So MATLAB and Simulink housed all of our uh, feature requirements and requirement models that were executable, and also some of our production code. So in MATLAB and Simulink, we can actually auto-generate code from those models and use it in production. So by combining these two, Unreal is a visualization engine, but you can also uh, co-simulate and test and validate your production code models all at the same time. Then the next piece was bringing Qt into Unreal. So Unreal does have some GUI creation capability, but I really wanted to leverage the power of Qt and reuse existing HMI simulators that I had already built. I also wanted to be able to use those HMI simulators on communicating with CAN, and Qt made this really easy with Qt CAN bus. So Qt has a tool called WebGL Streaming, so you can take an existing Qt application and stream it on the WebGL platform, and you can open it up in any web browser. And Qt makes this really easy. It's basically one line of code in the command prompt, and you can run an application on that WebGL platform. Then in that web browser, it translates the mouse clicks into touch events so you can inter interact with your application. So how do you bring this into Unreal? Well, Unreal has a web browser implementation, and this might be used in a game to show a marketplace or a store, but I used it to bring in the Qt HMI. So in that web browser, you can show your HMI, and I was able to position it in the different locations inside the interior of the vehicle. And then in Unreal, you can translate your touch and interaction events into web browser clicks so that you can then interact with your application. Then the next challenge was create a, uh, creating a simulation of the sync simulation. So then the next challenge was creating a simulation of the sync display. So the sync display in a Ford vehicle is in the center display and has different things like music, climate control, vehicle settings, and it also showcases your camera views. So the camera views are really important for a feature like Pro Trailer Backup Assist because you want to be able to see your trailer as you're backing up. So in order to create this simulation, I started in Unreal, and you can position a camera, so for example, the rear camera on the tailgate, and you can project that onto a plane. So that was my camera view. Then, using a layering technique, I brought in my cute HMI simulation of sync uh, so that you could do different settings in sync. But then when you wanted to show a camera view, I used transparency so that you could see through that layer and see the camera view in Unreal. Then on that transparent layer, you can still do text overlays and button overlays, which is important and used a lot in features at Ford. So with all of these pieces working together, I will now showcase a demonstration of the virtual automotive feature simulator and showcase it in virtual reality. Thank you. I'd like to extend a special thanks to those that helped with and inspired the project. So this is a demonstration of the virtual automotive feature simulator. So I'm sitting inside of the interior of the vehicle in virtual reality. So using the motion controllers, I can move around my virtual hands and I can look around the scene. So I have my side view mirror, and then I can look behind and I can see the trailer behind me. Then the Qt HMI is loaded, so I have the instrument cluster in sync using Qt HMI. So I can go ahead and start interacting with the interior. So I can press the start stop button and the HMI comes on. So for example, maybe I want to play music. So I can press play and music starts playing. I'll go ahead and stop that. Um, then I can go to the settings menu, for example. So we have a rear camera delay setting. So then I'll show the, the rear camera view. So I'll go ahead and shift to reverse. 
So now I can see my trailer and my rear camera view behind me. So now I'll go ahead and drive the vehicle around the scene. So using Unreal, you can drive around the vehicle and the trailer follows. And then I can go through the parking lot. And you can see the trailer following behind the vehicle. So now we'll go through a use case demonstration of Pro Trailer Backup Assist. And I'll back up, set up the feature and back up the trailer. So I'll go ahead and come to a stop. So using the HMI, so I have my Pro Trailer Backup Assist feature and I'll go ahead and add a trailer. So using the five-way switch, I'll press OK. I'll set up my trailer profile and I'll get the feature ready for calibration. So the first instruction to the customer is drive straight forward to calibrate. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll drive the vehicle forward and the system will calibrate. So then the user will follow the instructions. Next is calibration complete, stop vehicle to activate. And when do I come to a stop? The instruction is shift to reverse to activate. So the Pro Trailer Backup Assist feature is ready for use. And I can go ahead and back up the trailer and I can keep my hands off of the steering wheel. So I'll go ahead and shift to reverse. And then the feature takes over the steering and it'll back up the trailer straight for me. So I can see my trailer in the rear camera view and my instruction is back up slowly, turn knob to steer. So I'll go ahead and back up straight. And the feature will take over the steering and back up the trailer. And I can monitor my mirrors and see the trailer backing up in the scene. So that's a demonstration of the Pro Trailer Backup Assist feature in the Virtual Feature Simulator. And I'll go ahead and turn off the feature. Thank you. I wish to extend a special thank you to those that helped with and inspired the project. Thanks to Nate, Barry, and Dr. Maxim.